When the weather's a little inclement outside, what better than to repair into a fine country house? Coming up on this week's show, we have some cracking van and site reviews, plus friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. All in all, everything you need to know about buying, owning, and getting the most from your motor caravan. So let's see what's coming up in this episode. AutoQuest is Eldis's hugely popular entry-level motorhome range, and it remains a six-van lineup for the 2018 season. There's not much point fixing something that's not already broken, so the modifications to the lineup have been fairly minor. They include new graphics, which you can see on the model behind me, and, although they're not fitted here, brand new alloys, which are available as an option. However, it's really exciting to look in any new motorhome, so let's take a look at this. It's the 2018 AutoQuest 185. For 2017, the AutoQuest was moved onto the Peugeot Boxer low-level chassis, where it remains for 2018. Um, as such, the cab is pretty much the same as last year. Both of the cab seats swivel, so its occupants, their occupants can make the most of the lounge in front of them. And up top, you'll also find a couple of pockets where you can store roadmaps or guidebooks for when you're driving. What is new for 2018 is this new upholstery. Uh, it's really hard wearing and we think it looks really, really good. Uh, the carpet is new too, as is the colour scheme on the spacious lockers overhead. This is a full berth motorhome and although this has a real caravan style lounge with two facing sofas, there are actually four belted seats. Once you've made up the front two berths, it's really easy to get privacy from the back of the van. Simply unhook this screen and pull it across. It's in two parts and meets in the middle. The kitchen is in the offside centre of the motorhome. There's not a huge amount of storage here. There is a pair of lockers up top. Um, down below there are three small drawers and a couple of other lockers, but it should be sufficient for four people. There is, however, a handy extension flap at the end of the work surface, which you can lift up, which is ideal for putting your cup of tea on if you're sitting on the sofas. Underneath is a Dometic fridge, and alongside that, a Thetford oven with a separate grill unit. Above those, you'll find a black sink, it's pretty deep, and alongside that, a black three burner gas hob. Across the other side of the corridor is this unit. It's perfect for putting your television on. Face it one way and you can see it from the lounge. Face it the other and it can be seen from the beds behind. There's also the connections that you need here. Within this unit is a cupboard. Inside that, you'll find the freestanding table. It's pretty easy to get out. There's also a bit of storage space in there as well. This style of accommodation door is new for the range in 2018. It features a window with a blind. The convenience of twin fixed beds is what really draws people to this layout. And these are a really comfortable example. They're not hugely long, but they're pretty wide. And they also get new mattresses for 2018. We like the detailing here too. The dark brown headboard at the back looks smart. And there's also a nice little shelf, which is perfect for putting your glasses on overnight. Completing the layout is a full width rear washroom. This year it gets a new door handle. The washroom is pretty spacious. The separate shower cubicle means that you won't get your feet wet when you need to use the rest of the facilities. The hand basin looks modern and smart, and the domestic style light pool is a nice touch. There's a decent amount of storage here too, in the form of the three quarter length wardrobe. Last year's AutoQuest 185 had a payload of 561 kilograms. We don't have the figures for this year's van yet, but it's likely that it'll be very much the same. That should prove plenty for the kit of four people. Add in the dealer special models, of which there are quite a large number, and the AutoQuest is the UK's best-selling motorhome range. It's not hard to see why. It's well specified and well priced. This model in particular offers the best of all worlds. It has comfortable fixed beds, spacious living accommodation and practical storage solutions. It's clear to see that for 2018, the 185 continues to offer comfort and more for four people on tour. Hello there and welcome to another episode of Diamond Dave's Workshop. Today I'm going to talk about toilet cassettes. Now we all know what a toilet is, we all know what it's there for and we all use it. This is the cassette where all of the nasties go to before we dispose of it finally. There's a couple of things worth knowing about them. This is the outlet. When you're draining it, you unscrew that cap. That yellow button there, when you're emptying it, if you press that button, it allows air in so that it doesn't glug and splash back so much. So that's worth knowing. The seal needs checking periodically. A wipe with olive oil won't hurt it. And just check that the blade 
opens and closes cleanly. When you're cleaning, you can clean the tank out, you can rinse it out thoroughly with water. There are some proprietary products on the market for deep cleaning of them. Thetford, who make this particular unit, produce a cleaning solution. You put a dose of this in there, fill it up with water, slosh it around a bit, let it stand, drain it out. That will get rid of all of the nasties, lime scale build up, any crud and nasty things that we don't want about. So it keeps it nice and clean and sweet. There are a few things that go wrong with these. The seal, as we mentioned before, that can get dry and become detached. But also, inside, there's a mechanism. It's a swinging arm with a float and a magnet. If you're too vigorous in shaking it about when you clean the tank, you can dislodge that arm. That means you've got to put your hand inside to reattach it. So it's worth, when you're cleaning it, don't be too vigorous with it. Just give it a gentle swirl around, let it stand, then drain it out. Obviously, when you're using it and emptying it frequently, you'll rinse it at the point of emptying. So that's the cassette. Chemicals. Traditionally, we have pink and blue. The blue goes in the cassette to help break down the solid matter. The pink goes in the flush tank to keep it fresh. Unfortunately, some of the pink chemicals have been known to cause algae buildup in the flushing tank. So it's perhaps best not to use that. The blue can contain some nasty chemicals like formaldehyde which is fine if you're on a main sewer when you're emptying it, but if you're emptying it into a septic tank, the formaldehyde and other chemicals in here can kill the bacteria that work in the septic tank. So what we do instead is we use washing blocks. This is a washing powder tablet, biological washing powder. Any brand will do, they all do the same job. All you do is pop one of those in the cassette, when you use the cassette, the biological washing powder will help to break down the solid matter. Then when you empty it, it's not going to cause any harm to the biological ingredients of the septic tank. Another thing, if you're wild camping, using the toilet on a regular basis, obviously you're going to fill the cassette up. You have a limited storage capacity in this cassette. The more you use it, the sooner you're going to have to empty it. If you're wild camping, there may be no way you can empty it. We have a little trick to avoid filling the cassette too early. Instead of flushing the toilet when you've used it, we use a spray bottle made up with the pink solution. And all you do is when you've used the toilet, you just give it a couple of sprays around the bowl with that. Let that run down into the cassette. You put minimum extra water into the cassette and therefore your cassette will last a bit longer before it needs emptying. So one of these, when you buy a second-hand motorhome, is going to be used. Not everybody is entirely comfortable with that, but there is a solution. You can buy what's called a fresh-up kit, which gets you a brand new cassette and a brand new seat. Nobody else's bum has been on that. So you can put your new seat, put your new cassette in, and don't forget, we don't need chemicals. We can consign those to the shed. And if you're wild camping, if you use a spray bottle instead of flushing the toilet, you'll minimise how often you have to empty the cassette. That's about it for this time. See you next time. German manufacturer Detlefs built its first recreational vehicle way back in 1931, and since then, of course, its output has changed considerably. Now, for 2018, the Advantage lineup continues as Advantage Edition here in the UK and features two models, both of which are available exclusively at the Loudons dealership. This model behind me features the £1,995 edition pack, which features more than £7,000 worth of kit, so it's well worth getting. That includes the silver cab, the alloy wheels, a satellite system, satellite navigation, a reversing camera and much more. We're here at Loudham's Newark branch to take a look at the Detlef's T7051 Advantage edition, which features an island bed. So let's step inside. Now this van is only 7.4 metres in length, but as you step through this extra wide accommodation door, which you can see here, it feels much more spacious than that. Now that's thanks in part to the bright and airy lounge, which is helped by this huge roof light up top, check this out, but also because of the fact that the van is based on Fiat's low chassis, so there's plenty of headroom, two metres in fact. Up above me is the master control panel, where you can get information on everything from the water levels, 
to the temperature both inside and outside the van. We're not completely sure about the looks of them though, you're either going to love them or hate them. Up alongside is the Truma control panel, from here you can operate the Truma 6 Combi heating. It's iNet ready as well, which means that it's operable from your mobile phone. This is a three berth motorhome, but there are four belted seats. And what's more, six occupants can sit around here in absolute comfort. The table sits on a single leg and moves backwards and forwards to reach everybody. There is a small step up into the lounge, however, which you'll have to be careful of if you're carrying hot food. Moving backwards, you'll find the kitchen in the center of the van. Now, there's not a huge amount of work surface available, but it is supplemented by this natty little unit down here. Simply press the bottom and it flips up. Moving back up, there are black glass covers on both the sink and on the hob. Now the latter is particularly clever because it lifts up in two parts, which means that you can cook on one side while using the other as preparation surface. The sink itself is quite deep and it's also quite close to the edge, which means you don't have to lean over too far. Down below, it's great to see a Thetford combined oven and grill, which should prove particularly popular in the UK market. As for storage, Check out this handy unit. It slides right open and there's loads of room inside for recycling, cans, dry goods, whatever you want to store in there. And here we are in the rear bedroom. Now the sister model to this van has fixed single beds, but in my opinion, it's the island bed that is that bit more comfortable. There's loads of space to walk around either side of it, plenty of storage up top and storage underneath as well. What's more, it's a really bright place to spend time thanks to the two windows and the roof light up above. To the left of the bed is a pair of USB sockets and a mains plug, which is perfect for charging up your mobile phone overnight. Also, have a look at these. I love them. Simply unclip them, move them across to where you want them to be and put them back on again. And there are loads of neat little touches like that throughout this fan, such as these coat hooks which are in the shape of the Detlef's D logo. Now this motorhome looks and feels really well built and it's backed up by a six year water ingress warranty too, which is great for peace of mind. It's also really practical. It's based on a three and a half ton Fiat Ducato chassis. You can see behind me here, pretty standard Fiat Ducato fare in the cab, but you can also upgrade to the 3850 kilogram chassis, which gives you a whopping payload of more than 800 kilograms. If you take into consideration the price tag, 59,995 pounds, and you'll see that it all adds up to one very attractive motorhome. Hello and welcome to another episode of Diamond Dave's Workshop. Today we're going to be looking at replacing a roof light. Now this is a job that a reasonably competent DIYer could tackle, but it is quite an involved job, so we're going to split it into two parts. Today we're going to be looking at taking the old one out, and in the next part we'll be putting the new one in. Let's go and have a look. So the issue with this particular one is the dome of the roof light, this part, has gone opaque. It's no longer letting in clear light and at night you can't see the stars through it. So we're going to replace it with this one which has got a nice clear dome. Some of the tools we'll be using, a screwdriver, a kitchen knife. You might be wondering why we're using a kitchen knife. I find a thin flexible blade is ideal for cutting through the old sealant, so a nice sharp kitchen knife, don't pinch your wife's best one though. A scraper, paint scraper for scraping the old sealant off the roof. Some brake cleaner or a solvent to remove the old sealant and some blue paper towel to wipe it off with. And this is the new sealant, this is a non-setting mastic sealant that will bed the new roof light on, that will seal it and make sure it's watertight. Let's go inside and have a look at the job. Right, so here we are, this is the roof light. First thing we've got to do is take this piece down. Tim here has given us a hand today, so we'll just ease this down. Once that's down, we can then get at the screws that hold the main inner frame in. So Tim just unscrews that. And then the next part of the job is up on the top of the roof where we'll pull the whole thing out, cut through the ceiling and get the old roof light out. Right, so we're up on the roof now. You need to be careful, not all motorhome or caravan roofs are strong enough to take a, a human weight. So, in this case we're okay because I know this vehicle and I know it's a good strong roof. Again, 
the sharp kitchen knife is the tool for this job. Be careful with it, obviously, because it's sharp and you need to wear rubber gloves because the sealant is very sticky and it will make a right mess if you don't wear some protection. Insert the knife under the edge and just work it progressively through the sealant to cut through it. It can take quite a while because it's quite thick and stiff adhesive. Once you've got it started, what I do is just lift a corner and put a wooden wedge in. That will stop the roof light from re-adhering, re-bonding on the sealant. And then you can just work along, cutting through the sealant as you go. When you've got enough, cut through another wedge. And then we'll go down the side. If you're just resealing a roof light, so if you were going to reuse this, you need to be careful that you don't damage the frame, either by pulling too hard on it and cracking it, or cutting it with the knife. In this case, we're going to be replacing this roof light entirely, so damage to the old roof light is not a major issue. Remember, whenever you're using a sharp implement, whether it be a scraper or a knife, just be careful. Obviously, the sharp parts are near your fingers. You can very easily cut yourself. Just be careful. You don't want to spend the afternoon in A&E &E having your fingers sewn up. And once you've got it so far, you can just lift it up and then we can see the sealant and we can cut it easier. It does sound rough because there's a lot of dirt and grit collected in the area over the years. But we'll clean all that up when we're done. Before we put the new one in. You do need to be careful lifting it up. Because if you pull too hard, you can bend the roof. If like this is an aluminium skin, you can bend the aluminium skin of the roof, and cause damage. And that's it, that's the old roof light out. So now we clean up around the area. You don't want that dirt drop, dropping into the vehicle. Now we've got that off, we can now scrape the old sealant off. And a, a thin blade scraper like this is perfect. So we just scrape it away gently. Be careful not to scratch the roof. So we just gradually work it away. It takes a bit of time, but it's worth spending a few minutes doing it. Be careful not to drop it inside the vehicle, because if there's upholstery down there, underneath where you're working, it can make a right mess. If you don't see it and then you sit on it, it'll get stuck to your trousers, but worse than that, it'll mess up the upholstery in the vehicle. So. Always a good idea to put covers over any upholstery when you're doing a job like this. You can see that the, the top skin of the, of the roof is not fastened to the structure. That's deliberate, it's not a mistake. It's deliberate to allow for expansion. In hot weather, the roof skin can expand at a different rate to the timber framework inside. If it was all bonded together, it can cause all sorts of problems with rippling. So it's laid on as a loose panel. Right, so that's about the last of the majority of the sealant adhesive off. We'll give that a clean up with some chemical cleaner, a solvent, just to get the last traces off. Then we'll abrade that surface with a bit of emery paper just to give the new adhesive sealant a good bond to it. That's about it for up here. In part two, we'll finish the job by prepping the new roof light and fitting it to the roof of the van. That's it, we've reached the end of the show, but we'll be back real soon with some more cracking van and site reviews and friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, or via our website. Until next time then, tour safe and take care.